Good. Shalom. And how, how, how is everybody? Oh, everyone's good. The saints are well on this side of the world. How about there, where you're at? Yeah, thanks. Thanks be to the Almighty God and praise be good. His name. Good. Uh, All praises. Yeah. And I think today, uh, Bishop, we are going to deal with the topic, uh, the Sabbath. Okay. And, and if God permits us, so we shall speak of the, the Pentecost. Okay, uh, yeah. And, and to be precise, uh, all the feasts that the Most High actually ordained in the Bible. Yes, all things. That's a good thing. That is a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, let me take the opportunity also to welcome uh, our listeners. Uh, as you all know, this is a regular show between uh, uh, Papani and Bishop Nathaniel of IUIC. That is Israel United in Christ. And this show is dedicated to all the saints around the world. When I say all the saints around the world, it's not just a title for everybody. But it's talking about Israelites who has been scattered into the four corners of the world. And this message is for them. Because uh, remember, Christ said something. I said, do not go the way of the Gentiles, but rather go into the house of the Lordship of, the, of, of Israel. So, uh, as we are following the footsteps full step, full of the Most High God or Christ, this show is dedicated to the saints around the world. So, Bishop, you are welcome to the program. Oh, praise to the Most High. So glad to be here. So glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Harpani, we were, we were, um, we had a class yesterday. We were doing some, uh, research and, uh, examining some videos and there's an article or a video out that talks that discusses six countries um six islamic countries that are very hostile towards the uh children of the diaspora yeah. uh it mentioned uh tunisia yeah. uh they have such slang words for blacks as usif or amid yeah. which refers to black slaves they mentioned uh, the country Algeria is yeah. very uh, towards black people. Yeah. Even even Egypt. I was surprised that the, I didn't even know that there were still black people in Egypt. <laughs> uh, yeah, there were black people. There were black people over there. Yes, and, yes. And, yeah. and, I, they and, all moved out. I mean. Yeah, yeah. That is but a, still there. Many is, blacks are still there. Yeah, it is like Sudan. You know, there is mm -hmm. so much segregation. Every time the light skinned people they are up, and our people down. Yes. Go to Egypt, the same thing. Remember, yes. I played uh, football in Tunisia, so I know what you are talking of. Oh, okay, so okay. For two years. And I, when you say football, you mean what we uh, call soccer? Soccer, soccer, soccer. Yeah, soccer. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, okay. another derogatory remark they use for our people is Kalush in Tunisia. Kalush? Kalush. What does that mean? It means just black, like a nigger. <laughs> okay. Yeah, wow. yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes, you, you know, how these people sometimes they behave towards us, my brother. Yeah. Yes. The, the Arabs. The Arabs. The Arabs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, then it also mentioned uh, Libya. Mm -hmm. Very hostile towards us. They said that, um, you know, it was funny because uh, they said that Umar Gaddafi, mm -hmm. um, he had hired uh, mercenaries to kill Arab protesters. Uh, they, and they said that he also, which I read about, he also wanted to open up an African uh, bank, banking system. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I see why the government got rid of him, why America wanted to get rid of him, That's Umar right. Gaddafi. They mentioned in the article also Morocco is very hostile towards blacks. Mm -hmm. And one thing that surprised me was the country called Mauritania. You yeah. heard of it? Oh, I know Mauritania. They said they, uh, in 2013, they recorded 90,000 blacks still in slavery in 2013. Yeah. I can't believe what I was hearing, yeah, reading. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our, st our story is relevant. It is real. It is happening every day. Yes. It is very, very real. So where is the world court? Where is the justice with the United Nations? Where is the so-called justice? They are all white was tombs. Right, right. Where are the white Christians that stand up and protest with these things? Where are they? That's Where are the good white Christians? <laughs> yeah. It is, it is, it is incredible, Bishop. It is incredible. Now, and, 
So, Papa, I would like us to come up and formulate a plan to try to get the gospel to these six countries. I know it may be difficult, but you may have a way in. Yeah. Can you think of something for us? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, I, I will, I will sit down and I'll come, I'll come out with a plan. Even if it's by radio, because I know if we physically go there, they'll try to hurt us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe by radio would be best. Yeah. Yeah. No. So <laughs> the article forgot to mention Yemen. Yeah. The southern part of Yemen still has blacks and slavery there yeah. too. Yeah. You know, yeah. the children of the diaspora. Yeah. That's who they have in slavery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is why Papani, I'm so grateful for God's hit list. Mm -hmm. You know what a hit list is? Who oh, hit the hit list? Yeah, the hit list. You know what that is? <laughs> no, actually. A, a hit list is what a an assassin or a mercenary ah, uses. Okay, 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 okay. I want to read God's hit list. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Let's go to uh, Psalms eighty-three. Oh, oh, another thing, Pavani. Yeah. I was on the show yesterday morning. Uh, what's the name of it? Uh, uh Hello Motherland, uh -huh. the Biafra mm -hmm. radio station. Okay. They said day before yesterday the Hausa tribe which runs the military mm -hmm. stripped the black women the ebos the by biafra but uh naked down to their underwear the, the, at least 50 of them they stripped naked and made them walk mm -hmm. i i couldn't believe what i was hearing i said are you kidding me yeah 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 you know uh, and you know uh, you know the uh, the genesis of all this you know that <laughs> uh, there are a lot of tribal groups in africa yeah you see you know what a white man does the white man actually tries to strengthen one tribe against the other. Right. To invade your country. And mm -hmm. administratively, they, 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 they give one tribe more education than the others. Mm. They, and they actually inscript one tribe in the military and in the, in the, in the police service. Mm -hmm. So they use, they try to use such institutions against the other. So it is all divide and rule tactics. So that we don't have even love for ourselves again. Right, It's like right. Rwanda, the Tutis and the Hutus. They yes. do the same thing. Mm, mm, mm. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. So in, before we get to the Sabbath, I do, to cheer myself up and the listeners, I want to read God's hit list. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. okay. And, I want to go to Psalms 83. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 Psalm 83. Now, yeah. uh, maybe, I don't know whether, maybe you have uh, that video in your repertoire. The all yeah. about uh, in the 1800s when uh, King Leopold and Oton van Bismarck and all the powerful they, they came together and they, 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 they came together in a, in a meeting eh? and they came out with the plan that any, anywhere hmm, their foot we step in Africa, it belongs to them. <clears throat> so that, let's say, for instance, if uh, King Leopold steps in the Congo, the British do not have the right to, to come there, but they should go to other places to, uh, to, to dominate the people. So right. King Leopold actually took the Congo, and yes. the French people took uh, uh, Senegal. Mm. And before they took Senegal, you see, the Gambia is a small country within Senegal, but they are the same people. Right. So this, you see, bit by bit, they actually engulfed, and they cut us off. Mm, you see that? Now, I don't have the film on that. You have the film on that? Yeah, I have it, so I will set it, and I, I, will, I will send it to you. Great. Thank you so much. I definitely yeah. would like to see yeah. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I read the book on it, but I never saw a film on yeah. it. Yeah, like there, there, there is, there is, there is a documentary this on it. Yeah. I, I will mm. send it to you uh, when, I, when I get home. And I okay. make sure when I send it to you, I call you and uh, I, I, I tell you uh, that I've actually sent it. Great, great. All praises, all praises. Okay. Uh, so, Psalms 83. Okay. You want me to read it, company? I, I will read so that... Uh, okay. Psalms 83, yeah. Yeah, reading from uh, verse 1. 
Yes, sir. So keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God. Verse 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So God has enemies. And the enemies of God have lifted up the head as God, Christ, and the Israelites. That's what it means. They have lifted up the head. Like it says in Deuteronomy 28, 43, where it says, The stranger that is among you shall get up above you very high. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. That's what they can reference to. Okay. Go ahead. Two. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Three. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. So the crafty counsel, Papa, is like you and I were discussing yeah. how they set one people against another. Yeah. Okay? And sometimes it could be some of the same people that they will divide us and conquer us. Yeah. That is crafty counsel. Yeah. And they often do that in politics. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I was explaining to um, the brother Ike yesterday, who is one of the Biafra in Nigeria. Yeah. He's in South Africa. I told him that the white man does three things to black leaders. If you become very charismatic and growing in, in uh, respect, A, you get assassinated. B, you may get exiled. Or C, they may break you in prison and make you into their puppet. That's what they do to our people. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That is what they do to uh, uh, this man in South Africa, uh, Nelson no. Mandela. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, three. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. For they have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. So that's why they changed our identities, okay? When we were in Africa, many of us took on these tribal names. So, but the white man, he expounded on that, like uh, Nigeria, that, that is a British enforced name, okay? The names of many of these countries are put there by the white man. Okay, and we go by these names, these are false identities that keep us from remembering that we are Israel. Go ahead. They, they have consulted, five, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. So now we're going to read about the enemies who have, or are confederate against God, who are consented with one consent. So the nations we're about to read about is God's hit list. Okay, right? okay, okay. Now, cease. The tabernacles of Edom. And Edom is the white man. Yeah. Edom is the white. He's at the top of the list. When Christ returns, he's the first nation he's going to take down. Edom, yeah. the white man. America, Britain, France, Germany, Russia, Portugal, Spain. That is Edom. And then right. there, there's a one particular uh, chapter in the book of Psalms saying the Lord is coming to wound the head of many countries. Yes, exactly. I love that yeah. place. Yeah, okay. Yes. Five. Uh, okay, six. The tabernacle of Edom and the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites are the Arabs. Okay. Yeah, the Arabs are the descendants of Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Okay. They are Semitic, but they are God's enemies. And based on what we're reading and what we just discussed historically, those six or seven nation, Arab nations, and people always forget, Mecca was one of the largest slave ports in the world, where they castrated many of the men, okay, made, put us into their military. These Arabs are very, very cruel, just almost as cruel as this white man. So they are number two on God's hit list. And this is, Christians never talk about this. Christians ignore and make it like we're all equal in Jesus. No, that's not true. God has a list of enemies we're reading right now. White man number one, Arabs number two. <laughs> you know, we've been, we've been brainwashed to, uh, we've been brainwashed to, uh, I mean, to accept uh, our oppressor as our God. That is spiritual enslavement. Yes. Yeah, so that your oppressor becomes your God. So you don't mm -hmm. see anything, nothing wrong with his, uh, his, his cruelty. Right, right. They call it like Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. You know, you begin to li love your tormentor. Uh, okay. You know? okay, okay, okay. Okay, yes. the tabernacle, six, the tabernacle of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab. Moab is Chinese, right? 
and the Hagarins. The Hagarins are Egyptians, oh. right? Now seven, Gebal and Amon. Uh, Africans and nations in the middle around the Congo, right? Okay. And Amalek. Am Ammon. You forgot Ammon. Uh, yeah. A-M-O-N. Yeah. Gebal and Amon. Right. Ammon is the Japanese, okay. right? Okay. And Amalek. Amalek is Esau as well. That is the chief family. Okay. The ones that call themselves Jewish in Israel today, that's Amalek. That's the Kizas, eh? Mm-hmm. Right. The Philistines. Those are like the Watusis, go ahead. Yeah. With the inhabitants of Tyre. Right. That's around uh, the Tyre. The people there is probably around where the um, northern Sudan is. So. Okay. 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 Assyrian. As soon as the Assyrian, the Assyrian, okay. like Syria today. Okay. Also, it's joined with them. Mm -hmm. They have helped the children of Lot. Right. Selah. Selah, that means all praises or it is true. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Nine. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin. Right. At the that, I, okay. When God uh, judged the next, judged the nations. When you read uh, Judges chapter 7, and I believe that was uh, Gideon. Let me look real quick. In Judges, the book of Judges chapter 7. Let me see who that is. Yeah, that's Gideon's army. When Gideon's army destroyed the Midianites. That's what that's making reference to. So, so Asaph, which is one of the chief musicians under David, wrote this. Do unto them, do unto those nations that hit list we just read, mm -hmm. as unto the Midianites. As to Sisera, okay, that was Judges 4. As to Jabin at the brook of Kisan, okay. These are uh, history of in Judges chapter 4 and chapter 7 when God destroyed the enemies of the Israelites. Okay. So this prayer is for God to destroy that hit list from verse 6 to 8 where Asaph is asking God to destroy them. That's what he's saying, okay? Okay. 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 So now, so we can end that right there. Let's go to the Sabbath. I don't want to forget that. Okay. So I want all the listeners to understand, yes, God has a hit list. And he's going to enforce it when Christ returns. Yeah. So they're not going to escape for the evil they've done and are doing to our people. Yeah. Nobody escapes justice. Yeah. So it's going to match all of them into the valley of Jehoshaphat, right? Yes, yes, yes. All of them. All of them. And you know, yeah, uh, Bishop, uh, this uh, this afternoon I was in discussion of one of our our crew members. And actually when I just entered, he said, hey, in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Because this is his first time that he, he has he has heard someone speaking of the valley of Jehoshaphat. Uh -huh. It is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> How can you forget that? And you know why they don't, they don't want to teach about that in Joel 3? It tells you what they did to the Israelites, yeah. how they scattered them and sold them as slaves. Yeah. Okay, they don't want to read that part. Ne never, never, never. <laughs> oh, they so dumb, they say, oh, that happened to the white man. Then when you challenge them, prove the white man is sold into slavery. Let's see the records. Where is that at? Yeah. They can prove nothing. They can prove nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, regarding the Sabbath day, yeah. the Sabbath day, for example, let's go to Deuteronomy 28:47. Now, I want to show you one of the curses that fell upon us, the Israelites. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Deuteronomy 46. 46, okay. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Hey, let's start at 40. I like 45 to 47. Okay. Let's read for Okay. Deuteronomy 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearken not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Right. Now, so most mm -hmm. we broke God's commandments. Yeah. And he says, for because we broke his commandments, his laws, these are the curses that shall come upon thee. Go ahead. 46. And they shall be upon upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. The sign that would be upon the Israelites, proving they are the Israelites, is slavery and colonialism. That is the sign. Go ahead. Okay. Now, 47. 
because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Now that's the verse I wanted to get to. Because we didn't serve the Lord our God with joyfulness and gladness. So like what? When God gave us his laws, we were not happy, Papa Nick. Yeah. We wanted to be like the other nations. Okay? And that caused us to go into slavery. So let's read about one law, one commandment. We did not want to keep. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. This is the first yeah. holiday God ordained. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Uh -huh. Now verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So this is, the first, this is when the Sabbath was created on the seventh day. This was after the creation of man, which was the sixth day. So now, from there, let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 11. Let's, that is, we read the law on the Sabbath. Let's read the statutes okay. on, regarding the Sabbath okay. in Exodus 20 and 11. Okay. Exodus 20, 11. Exodus chapter 20, verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heavens and earth, the sea, and all that in them is... And rested at the seventh day. Hey, I'm sorry. Let's start at eight. I apologize. Okay. Verse eight, starting from verse eight. Now remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Ten. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maid servant. Nor thy maid servant, thy man servant, or thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within thy gates. So you see verse 8 where it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Yeah. That is the law that teaches us not to celebrate any other holiday that was ordained by man. Because God is telling you, remember my holidays. Okay. Meaning we are to forget. The other holidays that we're used to keeping, like Christmas, Kwanzaa, New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. God doesn't want us to remember those days. He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. How do we keep it holy? Now he's explaining. Six days you can work and do all your labor, but on the seventh day you are to rest. Go ahead, verse 11. Verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth, the sea. And all that is in them is, and we rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Right. So that holiday is the law regarding God's high holy days. Now, that's not the only statute regarding it where it says not to work. Let's read some more. Go to Exodus 15, verse 3. Okay. Exodus 15, verse 3. Exodus, not 15, and I'm sorry, uh, where is it at? Back. Where it says, uh, back, 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 back. Mm -mm -mm. Actually, go to Exodus 16, 23. Okay. Exodus 16, 23. Exodus 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of thy holy Sabbath unto uh -huh. God. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seeth that ye will see it, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So Moses is instructing us not to cook, not to boil or bake anything on the Sabbath. He's teaching us to do it before the Sabbath, to lay it up for you to eat on the Sabbath, but not to cook on the Sabbath day. Read it again. Uh, 
Exodus 16, 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said, Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and see it, that ye will see it, and that which remaineth overlay up for you to be kept until the morning. Right, the word sieve, S-E-E-T-H-E, -E -E, sieve, means to boil. It's saying don't boil nothing on the Sabbath, don't bake nothing on the Sabbath. He says you got to bake and boil before the Sabbath, and if you want to eat it the next day on the Sabbath, fine, but do not bake and boil anything on the Sabbath. Watch this, Exodus 35 and 3. Okay, Exodus uh, 35 and 3. Exodus chapter 35, verse 3. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. So now, it says, ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. That refers to cooking. That's what we just read in Exodus 16. It's not regular fire he's talking about, because remember, we had to light the menorah always in the temple. The fire had to be lit, okay? <coughs> and if it got cold, you had to have fire to, to warm yourself. Mm -hmm. So, verse 3 is referring to cooking. Okay. Don't bake, do not boil on the Sabbath day. You see that? Okay. You so now, let's go to, that's not, it's more precepts for the Sabbath day. Watch this. Okay. Nehemiah 13, the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 13, right? Yes, we're going to start at 15. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse, verse 15. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and leading asses as also wine, grapes and figs and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day and I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. 16. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah, and in Jerusalem. 17. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah, and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do, and profane the Sabbath day? You see that? So it's a sin to sell and buy on the Sabbath day. Go ahead. Okay. Then 18. Did not your fathers thus, and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon upon this city? Yet we bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. You see that? Yes. So they were yeah. profaning the Sabbath by buying and selling on the Sabbath. So he said, You bring more evil on us. Okay. This is why many of our people still suffer. We still defile the Sabbath day. Today. Yeah. Go ahead. 19. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dug before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut. The gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I at the gate that there should be nobody be brought in on the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. right. 20. So the merchants and the sellers of all kinds of were lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. 21. Then I testified against them and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the war? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. You see how serious Nehemiah was? Yeah. You know what he means when he says, I will lay hands on you. You know what that means? No, he's going to call curse upon them. He's going to beat them up. Uh -huh. If somebody lays their hands on you, they're roughing you up. Uh -huh. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Nehemiah didn't play. He told the other nations, don't come around here on the Sabbath day. So why? Because on the Sabbath there's to be no buying or selling. Look at chapter 10, verse 31. Nehemiah 10, 31. Okay. Nehemiah 10, 31. Okay. Bear me a second. 
Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we will not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day, and that we will leave the seventh year and the exaction of every debt. Uh, so you see that? So not only on just the Sabbath day, it said on any holy day that God ordained, there has to be no buying or selling. This is a law that the churches never teach. They refuse because why? They want to keep us in sin. But we must teach the law, these laws to our people, Papini. They must hear it and begin to obey. If we want God to stand on our side, to maintain our cause, to deliver us. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're writing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> good, 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 good. So, when we get to Matthew, the 12th chapter... Many times people are under the misconception that Christ did away with the Sabbath day. That is not true. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. So Let's look at... Now, uh, uh, so, uh, Bishop, can I, can I ask a question? Yes, now, yes. Uh, you see that in the, in, the, in the context in which we read the Bible, you see, Israel is in Jerusalem. Yes. Now, this is the situation where we've been scattered among the, among the Gentiles. Yes. We are living under the pollution of the Gentiles. Correct. Now, let's say, for instance, on the on the on the Sabbath and uh, the holy days. Mm -hmm. now, is is it easy for us to keep it while we, we are we are in exile, or there are other some bottlenecks that will actually hinder us not to not to observe all the all the laws? Yes, you're correct. That is correct. This is why, like when we read uh, in the book of Daniel. Uh, anytime Nebuchadnezzar called Daniel, he had to go. He could not say, well, today's the Sabbath, I'm not going to work. He had to go. He was a slave. So likewise today, many of us are under such oppression. But we must pray to God uh, to help us. Like, for example, in America, I'll just use this place here. In America, in certain cities here, states in America, they have religious uh, laws, religious freedom laws. Mm -hmm. Where they say, if you have a religion that allows you not to work on the Sabbath, just give us documentation and we will honor that. Okay. So here in America, it's a little more easier for us here. Okay. Uh, not all of us, because some of us, they, they work for private companies here, mm -hmm. and private companies are exempt from obeying religious freedom laws. Mm -hmm. Okay, So we have to understand that. And I understand outside of America, many of these places do not have those same freedoms. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So the, the reason, yeah. the reason right. why I ask is because I'm a victim of so because I have to work all night, even from the Friday sundown all the way down to Saturday. Mm, mm. Yeah. And you know and when you look, you're you're in Belgium, they don't have those religious freedom laws at all. We don't, we don't have we don't have those religious freedom. We don't have Okay. Them. Okay. Well that's freedom. what the Lord understands that. He, he this is why in um let's look at Acts um thirteen forty six. Acts chapter 13. That's 46. Uh, let me look. Let me see if that's it. 13 verse. I'm sorry. It's verse 38 and 39. Acts 13 verse 38 and 39. Acts chapter 13 verse 46 or 48. No, 38, 38. 38, okay. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Right? That's Christ, right? 39. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. So that's why it's important for us to believe in the Savior Christ. Mm -hmm. Because without him, we are not forgiven or justified, breaking God's laws, wherein under Moses, there was no forgiveness. We would be put like the man that picked up sticks on the Sabbath in Numbers chapter 15. The law was put him to death for picking up sticks. Okay? But now, in the time of this captivity, this is why grace is very, very important. Okay? And grace teaches us that we must observe to do God's law to the best of our ability. Yeah. We are rehearsing 
God's righteous acts, like it says in Judges 5.11. But we understand many of our brothers and sisters are in such harsh conditions, they cannot observe God's laws to the best of their ability. Okay. Uh, I remember the other time you also gave a quotation, is it in Luke, that when Christ comes to redeem, we are going to serve the Lord without fear. Yes. Let's read that. Luke chapter 1. Okay. Yes. And verse 71 to 74. Yeah. Luke chapter 1, 71 to 74, right? Yes. That which enemies, and from the hand of all that haters. Now 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant. 73, the oath which he swore. To our father Abraham, seventy four, that he will grant unto us that we we been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Yeah, that's it. We want to serve the Lord without fear, because right now we serve him in fear. Because if we try to keep certain commandments, certain laws like the Sabbath, our the the, the bosses or the owners will fire us. Yeah. And we'll have no means of income. Yeah. So the Lord sees all this evil. He sees it. Okay, but this is why, Papani, it is very important for us to gather together as a people to begin to help one another, yeah. okay, to help get us off of the, these, these particular jobs yeah. that we have yeah. so that we can begin to do more for the work of the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is what we have to work towards. That is true, and uh, to be honest, uh, uh, in the church which I belong now, every Friday, Friday sundown, we come together to to. to to, to, to pray. Mm, mm, yeah, mm. Friday sundown. So, Papa Lee, so you're praying with, uh, remember the scripture, go the Proverbs 28 9. Proverbs Multicultural is that a multicultural church? Actually, uh, yeah, there's only there's only white one white woman. Why is she there? Yeah, yeah. Kick her out. Why is she there? <laughs> now, the people that you're praying with, look at Proverbs twenty eight nine. Yeah, Proverbs chapter twenty eight, verse nine. He that try, uh, turneth away is here from hearing the law, and even his prayer shall be abomination. So if the brothers and sisters you are congregating with, mm -hmm. if they're not mindful of God's laws, mm -hmm. the Bible says their prayers are abomination. Yeah. Yeah. So they are wasting their time gathering, sending up fallacious or fallacious prayers to the Most High if they're not if they're not keeping His laws to the best of their ability. Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, I, look at Isaiah chapter 8. Watch this. Okay. Isaiah chapter 8. Yeah, it's chapter 8 and verse, let me look, uh, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 10. Thought at 9, 9 and 10. Nine. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. Uh, associate yourselves, O ye people. And ye shall be broken in pieces, and give mm -hmm. ye all ye of far countries. Get yourself, and ye shall be broken in pieces, and get yourself, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Mm -hmm. Number ten. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. So the Lord is telling Isaiah to tell the Israelites, though you associate yourselves with your enemies. Though you associate yourselves with people who don't keep my commandments, they shall be broken into pieces. This is why we have to be mindful of who we associate ourselves with in time of prayer. It's very important. Being around unbelievers, when I say unbelievers, Papani, yeah. I'm referring to men and women yeah. 
black men and women, children of the diaspora, who don't regard us as the Israelites, who don't regard Christ as the black Messiah, who don't regard that he died for the nation of Israel only. They have this other white man religion yeah. in their mind. Yeah. God says, do not associate yourselves with them. That, okay. that, that is it. You see, that is true. Uh, Bishop, you know, this, you see, when I came, when, when I came to, to this truth, you understand? Now, mm -hmm. it has been my fervent prayer to sell this kind of message to our brethren. But you see, time and time, as you are speaking the truth, sometimes you rather become, become the enemy. But then I am this this job, this kind of job, to some extent, and very soon maybe God will show me another way. Oh, He's showing me another way now. Yeah. What? Because all of them, all of them are listening to they listen to me. Eh? All of them are listening to me now. And they are Good. Just, yeah, I'm I'm telling you. Well, guess what you got to do, Papa Nee. You have to organize the believers yeah. to set up a place of worship where true believers come together. Not the white woman who is there to monitor you, mm -hmm. okay? Because that's why they're there, to monitor yeah. you and report back to someone. Yeah. Be mindful of these other nations amongst you. Yeah. They will smile in your face, report on you the things that you are teaching and saying. Be very mindful of these nations. Okay. okay? Ne never trust your enemy. Yes, that's what God says. Right. Look at John, John chapter 9. And let's start at verse 19. John, John chapter, chapter 9? Yes. 19. Uh-huh. It reads, John chapter 9, verse 19. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then does he now see? Right. His parents answered them and said, We know that he is our son, and that he was born blind. 21. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who has opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, and he shall speak for himself. Upstairs, next verse. Now, this word spake his parents, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already, that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. That is the fear. That was the fear then, Papani. That is the fear today. Do you know there are many brothers and sisters afraid to confess this truth that we are discussing yeah. because they were kicked out of their church? Yeah. That is the fear. Yeah. We must get over these fears, Papani. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you see... Remember, the Lord said, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And sometimes you see when like like you are saying the only thing that sometimes they do is when you speak the truth against the white man then they see you as somebody who is trying to reverse racism right that is how they see it. yes 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 watch this let's jump down in the same chapter uh jump down to verse 26 this is what the, the son the young man said regarding his eyes being open jump down uh, to uh, uh, the chapter and the verse again. Uh, ch uh, John chapter nine mm -hmm. and verse twenty-five. Verse twenty-five. He answered and said, "Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see." Because the Pharisees was calling Christ a sinner, so the young man that got healed from his blindness said. Whether he's a sinner, I know not. But I do know he healed my eyes. Go ahead. 26. Then said they to him again, What did he, what did he to thee? How open he thy eyes? 27. He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore will ye hear it again? Mm -hmm. Will ye also be his disciples? 28. Then they reviled him and said... You know what they reviled me? Reviled means hate him. Yeah. They hated him. Go ahead. <laughs> they reviled him and said, thou art, thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. Yeah. 29. We know that God spake unto Moses. 
As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Then he says, concerning this guy, Jesus Christ, we don't know whence he came. We don't know nothing about him. Go ahead. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing, that you know not from whence he is. And ye, he has opened my eyes. Right, so he said, this is amazing that you guys don't know. You guys, he was making mockery. You guys are the leaders of Israel, and you don't know from whence this man has come? Go ahead. Third one. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God, he doth his will. Him he heareth. So he what the young man said. He said, now we know that God hears not sinners. So he's cutting them. Mm -hmm. He's letting them know Christ is not a sinner. Mm -hmm. He says, because God does not hear sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So the young man is cutting the scribes and Pharisees. Go ahead. Okay. 32. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? Uh -huh. 33. If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. So the young man again, he said, if this man was not of God, he could do nothing. Go ahead. They answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether, altogether born in sin, and does that teach us and they cast him out. You see what they did? Yeah. They got so mad at him, they cast him out of the synagogue property. Yeah. Because he was rebuking them for their evil, for their sin. You see what they did to him? Yeah. They threw him out of the church. This is going to be the outcome for you and all true believers. You cannot hold on to wickedness. Okay? Yeah. They're going to cast you out. And it's better that you leave first. Just leave. Yeah. Read on. <laughs> 35 Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him he said unto him does thou believe on the son of God he answered and said who is he Lord that I might believe on him and Jesus said unto him thou hast both seen him and it is he that taketh that talketh with thee 38 right. and he said Lord I believe and he worshipped him you see that? Yeah. Puppet? He got kicked out of the church. He got kicked out. And Christ came to him and said, do you believe? He said, yes. He said, I am he. Then he worshipped him. So Christ comforted this young man that was cast out of the synagogue, cast out of the church. We have to believe that, Papani. Yeah. Yeah. We are so fearful of being excommunicated from these abominable churches. Don't fear. Do not fear. Leave those wicked churches. Okay? Yeah. To, 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 be, to be honest, I hope maybe uh, one day you, 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 you will uh, hear some of the, uh, the teachings that I am, uh, I am delivering. And it is causing, it is causing uh, waves all over. Oh, it is causing waves all over Belgium. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah, good. yeah. yeah. You know, so we you can do so much good, and that's all right. These these countries, Papani, please. I don't want you to forget Mauritania, Libya. These places, if we can get stations, radio shows out there, yeah. or if the people can hear your show, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. it would be a great help to them. That is, they need to hear this good news, Papani. Yeah, yeah. Our people in slavery. I was telling the congregation yes. You don't think because in America we live in a bubble. Yeah. Where everything is like, oh, you know, it's, it's, um, we live in a fairy tale land here where things are somewhat okay. It's not the best, mm -hmm. but it's somewhat good. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't realize that the vast majority of our people outside of America are really, really suffering. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So they need to hear the good news, the gospel. Yeah. And that's not that white man garbage that they're being taught yeah. and beat. Here. Yeah, you know, uh, there was a time I was watching the news, and around the Congo area, there's a village there, and there was a disease uh, outbreak, and you know that this white man just went there to be of good help to them to heal their disease through this vaccination and this kind of this thing. Mm. And you know, they have actually established a small church, and they've actually pestered the white Christ Jesus for their children to watch. So when such a child grows up and you tell you tell him or her, no, the image that you see is the image of Satan. 
definitely is going to revile what you are saying because yes. he knows from his in his mind that it is the why he was being infected with the disease it is a white man who actually saved his or her life mm -hmm. so this this kind of tricks and all kinds of uh, uh machinations being used by this white man yes yes that's what christ said in Ma if we can read matthew 24 that's what he said that's what he meant by that okay. Okay. matthew because it's talking about the white man's size matthew 24 verse 24 okay Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophet and shall show great signs and wonders in as much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. You see that? Yeah. You see that? Yeah. So it says, and shall show great signs and wonders. That's their signs, their medical advancements, okay? Yeah. People, and, and it says, if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Uh, Isaiah chapter 45. Thank you. Yes, 45 and 4. Yeah. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I yes, have even called thee by thy name. I have sent them thee, though thou hast not known me. So Israel is God's elect. The elect is not all races on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. The elect is God's scattered people throughout the diaspora who are suffering from colonialism and slavery. That is his elect. Yeah. And that's who we must look for and go to and teach this gospel to. They got to hear this good news. Yeah. And like you said, some of them will revile this truth. Why? Because the white man has helped them with his science, his medical advancements, and they believe the white man is God. Yeah. Yeah. They believe even worshiping the white image of Jesus, the image of the beast. So some of them will die in their sins. But they must hear the truth at least. Yeah. You understand? You see, uh, one of my nephews, he loves, when I say he loves God so much, and sometimes, you know, uh, he's the guy also, who is also, uh, by by my own observation, he, ha he has the zeal to serve the Lord. But mm. not in the right way, because they don't, they, don't, they don't understand all the truth. What I see, they don't see it that way. So sometimes mm. I do have a dialogue with him. Mm -hmm. Just about three days ago, I said something to him. That Christ said something. Come to me, all ye that labor, and have every word laden. Now, when you are not under bondage, how is Christ going to save you? Who is under bondage now? Right. He must look all over the planet. There are certain people, they are under bondage. Mm -hmm. And Christ is coming to save that people. Yes. There's no way Christ is coming to save the beast. Because the beast is a kingdom. And the beast right. is also different from the saints. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they said, okay, yeah, I've understood from the standpoint that they say, yeah, this is this is the, the this is the this is the gospel. The gospel is not for everybody. The gospel is for those who are under bondage. That is the elect and the saints of the most high. Yes, yes. Look at you know, that that <coughs> preacher you read or paraphrase, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That verse is so heavy, and I hear Christians often use it. Yeah. But they don't understand what it really, really means as you explain. Yeah. Here's the precept, Isaiah 14, okay. verse 1 to 3. Okay. Verse 3 is the point, but let's start at verse 1 and go down to 3. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 3, right? Verse 1, 1 to 3. Okay. From verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and send them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in their land of the Lord of in their land for the Lord for servants and handmaids. And, that is the right? <laughs> and they shall take them captives. Whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Now watch this, read. Three. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to sin. So you see verse three, yeah. and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear. And from the hard bondage 
wherein thou was made to serve. That's slavery. That's colonialism. That's what Christ meant in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest from what? Rest from the hard bondage and the sorrow yeah. wherein you was made to serve. Yeah. This is why our people must hear this good news, Papa Ani. Yeah. They must hear it. They have to hear it. Yeah. They have to come out of these stupid churches that they're in. Because mm -hmm. these churches are keeping them in the midst of sin. Yeah. Because, you know, you are like you were saying, you are in the same church with an Edoma. It's, on, it's not under any bondage. Right. He's not under any. But we were the ones. We we were born under the law. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 We were born under the law, so it is only we who can suffer the bondage that the Bible is talking about. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. So our people must hear this good news. This gospel. The word gospel means good news. It's good news to a slave to hear that they have redemption coming. It's good news to a slave, a servant, to hear. That they have a great day of deliverance coming, okay? Yeah. But the white man, the but look at this, Bobbany. Look at Revelation eleven eighteen. Then the Bible says, when Christ comes, all nations will be angry. Is it eleven eighteen? Let me see. Yes. Revelation chapter eleven verse eighteen, right? Yep. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. And the type of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them with destroy the that and, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. You see that? Yeah. So. The, that's why I said, the verse 18 says, and the nations were angry. These nations that say that they're Christians, company, they're lying. The Bible says the nations were angry when Christ returns. They're angry because they know their time for rulership is up. It's finished. Okay. God is going for the prophet, his servants, the saints. Okay. He's going to set us on, on top, on high. Then it says that the Lord will destroy those that destroy the earth. You ever hear this thing in the news called uh, uh, Earth Day or, uh, or what's that climate thing they got? Um, what is that called? The climate. climate. No. Yes. They said, oh, the earth is being messed up. The white man is the one destroying the earth. Yeah. With his nuclear fusions, with his chemicals everywhere, yeah. he's the one destroying the earth, the water, the air, the people, the minds of the people. It's him. It's him. It's him. That's why I said I'm going to destroy those that destroyed the earth. Okay? That's this white man. Yeah. That's them. Yeah. With their nuclear testings and all of that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. They say, oh, there's a hole in the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. Then in America, they say, oh, the, the aerosols that the black people use causes the hole in the, uh, in the uh, ozone layer. No, it's not. It's the nuclear testing. You're shooting missiles up there. Yeah. Sending satellites, that's messing up the ozone layer. Yeah. But they're going to blame us. These demons. <laughs> you, see, you see, they have actually polluted the rivers and the seas. And then yes. actually, you know the effect of the lead and the mercury. Yeah. When it gets into the fish and we digest it, it goes, it, it, it is not good for our brain. Then it yes. causes a lot of, a lot of uh, diseases. Yes. Hey. In Detroit, Michigan, Papani, the white man poisoned the water reservoir that goes throughout the black communities. Yeah. There are thousands of black children who have been poisoned, poisoned with lead in the water, and they are, their minds are corrupted now. Yeah. Then the white man, they said you can't sue the, uh, the Detroit, Michigan governor, the, uh, the state legislature, so they say now, oh, we'll give you free college. What good is free college and these children are dying? See how evil they are? Evil, Papa. I mean, and they did the same thing in Washington, D.C. Poisoned the water reserve that goes throughout the black communities. Yeah. And the black leaders here, they can do nothing. They're powerless here. Powerless. The, uh, 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 the Reverend Asharin and uh, Jesse Jackson. Powerless. Puppets. Powerless puppets. That's what they, what they are. <laughs> you know? It's, it's amazing. Okay. So we need to hear the news company. We yeah, need to hear. Yeah, that one. You know, uh, there is there is a, there is a, a there, there is a portion that 
you said that we need to speak the gospel with boldness. Yes. We need to speak the gospel with boldness. And to be honest, I have started it. But you know, sometimes uh, I am being driven with passions to uh, visit my people. Uh -huh. To be honest, I am, I am, uh, I am so, I am so happy with the things that God is showing me. Good. But, yeah, but with time, with, with time. If they don't want to repent and come to this truth, finish. Yep, they're finished, Papani. They're finished. Look at uh, Titus chapter uh Titus two fifteen. Titus two fifteen. Titus two fifteen. I see these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. You see that? Yeah. So it's gospel. We are commanded to exhort and rebuke with all authority because the authority given unto us is by the Lord. Yeah. We have the truth to help set the people free in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We have the truth. So we must rebuke and exhort with all authority. Not questions that merely mouth, I don't know, I'm not sure. No, we are sure. We know what we're talking about. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Whether people hear or forbear, they must hear it. Prove they all things. It. Prove all things. Yes, yes. So now, in Judges 5.11, Papa, and this is what I want to show you about like what we discussed earlier, about many of God's high holy days that we may not be able to keep. Okay. Because if we work under oppression. Judges chapter 5, verse 11. Okay. It's very important for the listeners to understand that. Now, I don't, the Lord knows if we are making excuses because, like, for example, here in America, certain people will be allowed to get the Sabbath off and a white man will, will want to pay them an extra $200 if they work the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So then they decide to work the Sabbath. They will be judged, Papa Nee. You know what I said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will yeah. be judged for that. Yeah. Because consciousness allowed you to defile the Sabbath when you had it off mm -hmm. to serve the Lord. Did you get it yet? Yeah. Judges 5? Yeah, Judges 5.11. Uh -huh. They that are delivered from the noise of arches in the places of drawing water, there, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his village, his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Now I wanted that verse because it says, They that are delivered from the noise of archers. The noise of archers is really prophetically talking about the missiles. That's the real archers that we are to be delivered from, Papa Nee. It says, in the places of drawing waters. The, when, this, when people make you a, a drawer of water, what are you? The, you a, a bondage and slavery. Right, bondage, slavery, that's what it's talking about. It says, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts. So that's what we're doing now, Papa Nee. We are rehearsing the righteous acts. Some of us who can get off on the Sabbath, we are rehearsing. Some of us cannot. Some of us can get off on new moon, high holy days. Some of us cannot. Some of us can get off on certain days. Some of us cannot. But those of us that can do, we must do. Okay? Some of us that can rehearse, we must, all of us, in some shape, form, or fashion, Papa Nee, we are all commanded to at least rehearse. You know what it means to rehearse? It means it's not the real thing, Papa Nee. Yeah. Like but, but, but you practice it. You practice it. Yes. 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 This is why, look at Exodus, uh, Ezekiel 20. We read uh, a few weeks ago. Ezekiel 20. This is when rehearsal time is over, Papa Nee. Ezekiel 20, ah, 30. Okay, okay, okay. In the wilderness. Yes, yes. Re there will be no more rehearsals when this day comes. Yeah. Ezekiel uh, chapter 20, is it uh, 30, 35 or reading from 33? 33 there. Mm -hmm. 33. As I live, says the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm, and with fury report out, will I rule over you? 34. And I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries, wherein ye are scattered, with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury report out. 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. 36. Like as, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, 
So will I plead with you, says the Lord God. Right. Now, 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Mm -hmm. 38. From among you, the rebels, and them, yeah, yeah the rebels, I and them that transgress against me, I will bring them forth out of the countries wherein they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Right, so that's when rehearsal time is over. He's going to plead with us face to face, just like he did with Moses and the Israelites. He's going to tell us his laws. He's going to give us the history all over again. And anyone that rebels on that day, Papa Nee, the prophecy is they're going to die. They will not enter the land of Israel. They're going to die in the wilderness. Okay. And this is what we have to be mindful of, you know? Okay, okay. Okay. So, uh, Bishop, you know, yes. we have to uh, give the baton because the uh, other other group will take, okay. will take over as soon as we finish. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. Thank you. You know, thank you so much for the wonderful job that we are doing. Oh, praise uh, to Yeah, because I've been saying this kind of precept, it's, it is not within the, within the Christian though. So right. Bit by bit, we pray upon the upon the Most High God. Yes. Especially to give the saints the power to understand the message. Yes. It's very important, Papani, for the organization of our people in the cities we are located. Believers must begin to organize, come together as one, work together. Yeah. Okay? okay? Let's not be separated. Okay. And it's very, you're in a city with eight believers, you eight believers come together. You 12 believers come together. You 20 believers come together. Especially, okay. my, especially, I do that job in my house. Yes. A lot, a lot, I, have a, I have a lot of, because I'm a soccer player, so I have a lot of friends. Good. So anytime they come around me, they get a message free. All praises, all that, praises. That is how I'm doing it. So actually, yeah. I don't have a special place there. My house is the house of the truth. Yes. So that is what yeah. I've, I've been using my house to do the job. Okay. Eventually, what you want to do is get a place of worship okay. where you can all come together okay. in honor of God and His law, statutes, and commandments. Okay. That's what you want to do eventually. Okay. okay? okay. Organize. And coming together, properly means organizing your money. Yeah. Bringing your monies together with believers okay. so that you can do great works and have a place for other believers to come fellowship, come worship. When they see you do that, they know you believe and take this truth seriously. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, thank you very much, Bishop. Yes. Uh, we're going to wrap up the show. And, okay. you know, we'll thank you. Ask you uh, to give the closing remarks. Okay. So, brothers, sisters, please visit the website if you can at www.israelunite.org. Uh, you can call us in the States. You can also call Brother Papani, uh, Brother Ashan, to help organize the people in whatever state, city you are located in. Please, it's very important for the gospel to get out. And Papani, I don't want you to forget to try to get your radio station in these other countries where okay. our people suffer so much. Okay. 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 I, I will, I will, when I go home, I'm going to do that research and uh, because I, I have a brother in Libya. And I make sure I get his number and whether we can start to, to do something about it. Good, 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 good. All praises to the Most High. Yeah. And all praises to the saints scattered throughout Belgium and all the lands. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, uh, as I said, I'm going to send the, the, uh, the documentary video. Yes. So when I send it, maybe I will call you to uh, just to conscientize you that I've, I've actually sent it. Okay, great. Thank you, Papa Nick. Okay, thank you, too. Thank you very much. Okay, brother. We we'll say shalom to you all. See you next week. See you next week. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to 
for our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.